Governor, House Republicans have proposed a clean six-week debt ceiling raise, to which Harry Reid responded, please. Uh, then we heard they also want to set up immediate talks to negotiate reopening the government. Senate Republicans want to reopen the government and uh, repeal that medical device tax, a couple of other things. Are Democrats going to learn how to say yes at some point? Well, I, I hope that they do. But listen, a six-week delay on this is like kissing your sister. The, it, it, the markets are not going to be happy with this. The, the markets are going to continue to say, oh, my God, how are the politicians going to screw it up six weeks from now? Mm -hmm. Look, it's the full credit and faith of the United States of America. And people can say, well, that doesn't matter. It's only a few percent here and a few percent there. Full faith. So you and want credit. them to say no? I, I want them to say, we're, we're not going to use the debt limit as a negotiating ship. Let's get that done. And if we want to make the size of government smaller, I've got ideas. In fact, I haven't heard a lot of congressmen in the Republican side with ideas on how to make the government smaller. I'll give you a big list. You could start right now. You could say, we're going to have vacancy savings. When somebody retires from the federal government, we won't replace them. And we'll do, say, 5 or 10% of them. If you just incrementally did these things, you wouldn't hurt these programs, but you could make government more efficient. Congress Why aren't you putting those kinds of things forward? You know, obviously, you haven't been listening to many of us in the House Republican side. Um, for many of us, we've been laying out repeatedly. And, and for people like myself who have also been trying to deal with the reality of how bonded indebtedness works in the House, those are many of the ideas we have. But think about the miraculous thing that's just happened. We have a president who's actually now engaging in a conversation for weeks and weeks saying, I'm not talking to you guys. And the fact of the matter is, you look at the success of the 90s, where you also had divided government, there was a conversation. Now, they had to go through a shutdown dance and learn how to communicate. Maybe, maybe that's what's about to happen is the adults are coming into the room and realizing we have divided government. Yeah. There are ideas out there on both sides. Well, Will you we have to talk about, Will you let's talk about the adults us? in the room. Um, so the president has made clear, and nothing has changed here, that he's not going to negotiate over our full faith and credit. Nor should he. No, nor, nor should nor, he. Nor, right. nor, so nor he's not going to do that. And he's also not going to negotiate on anything until the government reopens. And that still remains the position. However, in the discussions, you know, I was, have, was not in the room today. <laughs> SC wasn't in the room. Nope. But we, we're just reading what's out there. My understanding is that you guys have completely folded on Obamacare. Well, we're not delaying. Well, well, we're not defunding. You well, were a big proponent well, well, of no, that. No, let, let's walk through something here. Our fourth offer that was also just tabled by um, our beloved majority leader in the Senate basically was nothing but an argument for fairness, saying, look, individuals deserve the same treatment as big business and big labor. And, oh, by the way, those of us in Congress should also live under the law it's written. And it was stunning. We didn't even get a counteroffer back on that. But that Be was a you lot know why. of... You know why, right? Um, I, well, <laughs> because I, I, this is a problem that you created because you followed Ted Cruz off that plank yeah, into shutting and, down the government. And why should Democrats negotiate reopening the government with you when they've already agreed to significant budget cuts, a budget that you wanted? And this really was just a political ploy well, over Obamacare. And, and the I American that's, people that's now a, know that. A fine, fine talking point, but it actually loses a lot of substance in the math. The reality of it is for many of us, when you're moving into another multi-trillion dollar entitlement at the same time where we all agree is right and left that we have a stunning debt crisis coming at us near the end of this decade, mm -hmm. um, it's the honorable thing to stand up and say, we can't afford